Hello, my name is Tridar, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a hydrothermal lake region like this in World Painter. But before we get to World Painter, let's take a look around this uh, map here. So the first thing that you will notice is that the landscape is very colorful, and this is all done almost entirely with stained clays. And if we lower ourselves to the shore here, we can kind of see the banding of everything on the horizon. We're standing on the green layer, and as we ascend up in height, things become more colorful. We're using more reds and oranges, and then things get darker than that. We start using the browns, the grays, the blacks, and the uh, cyans and everything. And along the top here, we have an incrustation of white, sort of a ring around the entire thing serving as sort of a uh, an outer layer of salt. And then beyond that, we reverse the layers and then go up to cover the landscape. Now, if we also will land here and go in the water, we can see on the sides here that things become more blue as we look down. And that's not just the water doing that. There is also the underground sections that have been painted in a similar layer theme as this here. We can also sort of see the hydrothermal vent down there as well with the, the magma blocks and they'll make bubble columns and, and everything over there. So with a couple of potions we can see below the water now quite well. And we can also see that the colors and the blobs and everything of the blue and the, the black and further down the reds and the bedrock and the magma blocks and everything down here. So let's actually go down into the water down here so you can see how this is laid out down here. So this is deep into the vent. We can see up in the water column here and back towards the shore. The whole thing gives a very nice and, and pleasing effect. And I think this is something you will definitely want to learn how to add to your world painter skills. So without further ado, we will now hop into World Painter and I will show you from scratch how I built this map. Okay, so this is the default view that you see when you load up World Painter and I'm going to do this from scratch, so bear with me a little. What we need to do is first, I like to prepare my canvas a little bit and change all the terrain here to green. So we will select a spray can and just the uh, flat brush over here, turn our intensity all the way up. And we want to select the, the grass terrain here and then make it all grass-like so. And I think for this, we're going to need a little bit of height. So we will sele select the noise brush up here and raise things up till we see just another contour layer and then Use the same brush and just flatten everything out. Here we get a nice flat canvas. It doesn't have to be completely flat. We're going to be adding a lot of texture to this anyway. And from here, we then want to select the height over here, this brush, and then we want to go downwards. I want to turn our intensity all the way up for this though. Go down about that far and now we need to sort of hand sculpt a lake. And I like to do this with just the same noise brush. I use this brush uh, most of the time, really. And then we will select the, the flatten tool and then probably turn our intensity back down to 50. And then rake this around the rim of the, the lake here because we're gonna have quite a number of Color features on this. I think we want to make this as smooth of a transition around here as we can to get all of the, the benefits of seeing all the nice pretty colors that we're going to be making from our geothermal pool feature. And let's uh, rake down by the water a little bit more. Get a smoother transition around there. Uh, this is why I like to use the noise brush. We get all this wonderful texture around here, which is really going to help bring out the, the colors when we start sculpting the pool here. So I think uh, let's give our, our 
hydrothermal pool, just a little bit of character. Let's not make it perfectly circular. Let's have some, some indentations in it here and there. Maybe have it be a little bit asymmetrical down, down this way. Just a tiny bit. Now, sculpting water features is, um, there's no real quick and easy way to do this. It's sort of an acquired skill that you pick up when you do a lot of terraforming. That looks nice, actually. So that will be the basis for our, our hydrothermal feature there. And let's rake our brush around the edges here just a little bit more to have the upper contours follow the shape of the pool, but we also want to have them be just a little bit different as well. So maybe like kind of around here. There we go. I think that's about as good as we can do for a small map. So while I'm thinking about it, let's just move the spawn point up over here. All right, so now with our uh, quick terraforming job done, we are ready to paint in the layers. So I'm going to show you how to do these. Now, I'm not going to remake all the, the dozen or so layers from scratch. I'm going to import them into the world here by adding a new custom terrain. Uh, if you're doing this from scratch, you would want to create a new custom material. You would want to select complex, then blobs, and then like add a, add a couple of materials down here. I'll show you that from scratch in a minute, but I'm going to actually import these from my existing world. So when I give you this map download, you will have them that uh, you can use and just import them from there yourself. Okay, so with all those selected, I just select OK, and they appear down here in the custom terrain menu. So we have about 18 layers. I think uh, we may not use the, the red one. And we want to start at the water's edge down here and paint them in. So the first thing we have to do is identify where the edge is. So we want to select our spray can. And we're going to use the, the solid square brush that at 100%. But we need to code this for the height setting because if we, if we pick one of these and paint it, you can see that it's just painting all the layers here. And we don't want it to do that. In order to get this effect, we have to do this one layer at a time. Now, if we take our little crosshairs and we move it near the water here and place it on the shore, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you will see that it's giving us a height indication of 62, and that's the default water layer. And if we go over to this upper layer here, we can see that the height increases to 63, then 64, 65, and so on as we go up the terrain contours that you see here. So what we need to do now is to code these for the correct height. So we're going to take, I think, what, 62 to 63 for the first layer, which is going to be the lime green mesa. And we, in order to do that, we need to select these two settings here, at or above and at or below. So at or above, I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory. We want to do at or ab above level 62, and then at or below level 63. So this will target both of these layers here. So now if we paint, we can see that only layers 62 and 63 are being affected by this terrain brush here. Now let's go around and just uh, quickly paint that in there. So the next terrain we want to select is going to be the yellow mesa. And for this, we want to target layer 64 only. So we will click our buttons here and we want to, them to be identical. And when they both read 64, that will target only layer 64 here. So we will quickly do that, and you can see how the terrain is being set up here to blend into each other. And we want to select a two block layer for the next one. So we want to select between what, 65 and 66 over here. So that will give us this 
to block selection here. And you can see that the basic outline of our hydrothermal pool and all the colors around the banks of the water here are now coming into focus and you can see how I'm doing this. So that means we're going up the color scale, which means we need to find orange, red, yellow mesa. And we want to have this be at level, what, 67. So we want to set both of these here to 67 and then paint it in like so. And then after that, we are using orange red mesa over here for the next step, which is going to be uh, level 68. So we can just use our buttons here, target level 68, and paint that in like so. And I think we can actually expand this one up another layer uh, to level 69. Here, yes, that looks pretty nice. We want to have a thicker red band around here. And then we want to find red, brown, orange over here and move up another level. Let's uh, see what that looks like. It's serving, of course, as a transition layer between the reds and the darker browns and blacks that we are going to be painting on the surface. And then I think we need a red, brown, black right beside that at one block farther up that there and then i think the next one is brown and black moving up one more block with our arrows on the sides here and i think that needs to go up another layer so we're going to move this up to level 73 as well to make that a bit darker, perhaps 74 also. Yeah, that looks pretty good. But we're not done. We need to start adding in black and gray to continue our color profile up. So we will select block 75, start painting that in. And I think because of the terraforming here, we will go up an additional block for that. Now time to zoom out a little ways. And then we want to find the, the gray and light gray over here for, I think, the next two blocks for 78 to 79. And I think for this one, we will just paint level 78 with this. Then we want to find the white and light gray. And let's see what that looks like at level 78 here. Too bad. But now for level, what is that, 79, we want to replicate a sort of a, a salt band that's formed around the pool at the top here. And we could do this by just extending this up a little farther, but we're going to do something a little bit different. And we are going to add another layer. This is going to be a simple layer. And the material we want to use for this is, is just going to be white clay. So we will add that. We will use this at level 79 here. And there we go. Now, to paint the rest of the terrain above this, we're going to do the reverse of what we just did to create this. In other words, we are going to select the white light gray mesa again for level 80 and paint that in there all over the map. Then we go to level 81. We're going back down again, the same order that we painted the first time. And we will select the, the other one there, go up to level 82, and so on and so forth. You can see where this is going. And let's go up to level 83, select this one here again and then for the rest of them we will select at or above 84 
and paint it entirely with brown and black. Done like so to fully flesh out the map. Now we're not quite done because if you notice, we haven't done anything below the water. So, so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to use the sponge feature and get rid of that. So we can see that down here we still have all this grass. And at the water, this was, what level is that? That's going to be 61, right? So we want to choose at or above 61 and 61 for both of these. And we want to paint another layer of lime green mesa around the water's edge there. And below that, we will then use the neglected green mesa over here. And we want to have this be, how many blocks? I think a couple of blocks, maybe 59 to 60. Perhaps a bit more than that. I think let's try 57 to 60. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Then below that, we need to find Blue Mesa. As you can tell, we're going down the colors of the rainbow now. On our way to the bottom. So between 53 and 56, we will paint that layer in there. And then below that, we want to find the one that I have named Hydrothermal Bottom here. And we want to go from how many blocks? Maybe let's see 50 to 53. See how that looks. I think quite a bit lower than that. Down to 40. To 53 there to form the basis of that. And we also need to do a tiny bit more terraforming here. We'll take the noise brush and we want to go straight down. Down to uh, pretty much to bedrock here. Let's do that again. There we go. Because we need to make a vent that's a very deep for our water to come up from, from the depths down there. So let's return to our spray can. And now we want to find the one that I've named hydrothermal deep. And then we want to paint that, let's just say at or below. 39 will be that setting there. Use the right brush. There we go. And below that, we have one less remaining, which is the hydrothermal vent sides. And it looks like the, the terraforming height for this is going to be about 25. So we'll set that to add or below 25. But as you can see, our uh, hydrothermal vent and pool and surrounding ring of minerals and everything is now complete. So what we need to do is add back in the water. So we will use our dropper tool and start adding in the water till we reach the height of 62 again, where we started with before we painted all that. And I'll use the brush again here and take a slice through the water to show it to you. There. So that is the complete process that you will need to make your own a hydrothermal pool in World Painter. This is kind of an advanced terraforming technique, but I hope that I have explained it to you adequately enough in the tutorial for you to be able to use this in your own worlds. So that concludes the World Painter tutorial. I know it's been quite a while since I've done one of these. But I thought that you would really appreciate being able to add this hydrothermal feature to any worlds that you might create going forwards. I would say that the end product is definitely worth your time learning how to do. And remember, this world and also the World Painter Save itself will be available for download in the video description. And you can use that to import all of the custom terrains and layers and everything into your own worlds from there without having to remake them yourself. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.